When you got the tattoo, was there a moment while you're there in the chair getting it that you had like a, a pang of regret? Or no, you, it was almost like an affirmation to yourself that if I have this, there's no going back. Uh, no, there wasn't, there wasn't a pang of regret until um, I s stopped working. And then I was like, damn, I got this tattoo. And then, you know, it became something that I'd look at and I'd go, yeah, I got this tattoo. So there was maybe a moment after when I stopped working as much, I was like, oh man. But then it started to be like, no, this is, this is why I got to wake up every day and go to meetings. And this is why I got to, you know, continue to hustle because it's a grind. And to truly be a filmmaker, um, you have to be the type of person that, you know, when you get that phone call, like I was talking about, where they say, hey, do you want a, do you want a regular job? Like that's going to pay you a salary or do you want to make this little indie film that's not going to pay you any money. Because uh, I never saw any money off of My Pure Joy. I never made a cent. But um, you have to be the type of person that when you answer that phone and they ask you that, you go, no, I want to make the movie. Because at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's what a filmmaker is. You're the one. It's, it's, it's insanity. It's literally insanity. But you have to be that kind of insane. So tips for hibernating. I think that's a beautiful like way to put it because there are, you know, days when you're getting emails and all sorts of stuff's happening and then there's just times when you can't get arrested. It dries up and it feels like there's a conspiracy against you. And so when you go through those hibernation type times, what, what are some tips for other people that they should know for the winter? See, I'm totally learning about this now too because uh, it's the first time it happened to me. So... Uh, what I've learned is um, one of my one of the things I really learned, and, and this is going to sound really silly, and I probably shouldn't say it, but uh, don't continue to spend money as if you are making the same money that you were making. Um, because I was like, well, I'll probably get a job in the next three weeks. So um, don't don't continue to just go out and run ridiculous bar tabs and stuff like that. Be, be more conservative. Um, don't eat out every night. Uh, also, go out to as many industry type events as possible. Um, network as much as possible. Talk with people. And what I've learned is at this level, unless you're making a studio film, you're an indie filmmaker. And if you're an indie filmmaker at this level, we are all on the same playing field. I don't care if you're doing, you know, million dollar movies or if you're doing movies on $500 budgets. You're all struggling and you're all making these movies. So at the end of the day, talk with other filmmakers. Talk to people. And they're, unless they're a jackass, they're really approachable. I respond to people on my Twitter. I have... 100,000 followers on Twitter. I respond to every single one of them every time they ask me a question. I get I get messages and emails all the time from fans asking, you know, how do you how do you go out and do this and why do you do this? And that's one of the reasons why I made my movie to Jennifer on a $500 budget on an iPhone 5 because I wanted to show people that it's possible as long as there is a good script, you don't need a crew, you don't need anything except the phone that was, you know, the, the most accessible camera, the thing that's in your pocket, you can pull it out and make a movie as long as you have a good story. And that movie ended up getting rave reviews, won me a bunch of festival awards, and, you know, is on DVD and it's been distributed and it's done decent. And at the end of the day, that, that shows you that you still flex your creative muscle. When you, when you hit hibernation, don't, don't take that as a as an insult against you and the world's against you, take it as time to hone your creative process. You can sit there and you can write, you can sit there and create. You don't have to stop creating. And at the end of the day, we have a responsibility once we become creators to try and inspire others to create. Because my film school not only was making movies, but my film school was watching movies. I grew up watching movies. I watched movies all the time. I would come home every day, my dad was sick, he was in a hospital bed <clears throat> for most of my childhood. After that, he was bedridden at home and he was on a bunch of drugs. He had to have a liver transplant. He was you know, dying of hepatitis C. And the only thing that I could do with him was watch movies. And that's what I would do every day. I'd go, to, go up to his room, upstairs, sit down, watch movies. 
and we talk about them. And, you know, movies became my life. And at the end of the day, film is something that people can share. And we have a responsibility as the people that create to inspire others to create so that the people that are listening to me talk about going out to make movies are one day the people that are saying, you got to go out and make movies. Because if not, then there's no such thing as a film renaissance. There's no such thing as film being created. It just dies. We have to go out and inspire. And if we don't inspire, we're not doing our jobs correctly. So use your time in hibernation to inspire others and to talk with others. And you never know when you're talking to other people, maybe they have a project that you're right for. or Maybe, maybe you can start developing something with that actor that's been hitting you up all the time to do something with them. You, you never know. But don't, don't just turn somebody down just because they're eager to work with you. Because if they're eager to work with you, that's awesome. If they're not eager to work with you, you're the eager person hitting them up. So put yourself in that position and, and realize that it's our job to inspire others. Just so everybody's aware, my dad is still alive. He had a liver transplant and uh, we actually wrote a script together recently and we're going to write another one together. So it's, it's been really great being able to collaborate with uh, one of the most talented writers I've ever known. So.